I want to talk to you today about science education, but with a little bit of a twist. I'll start with a little bit of science. I have spent, as you've just heard, most of my adult life very happily lost in deep space, <laughs> trying to understand this magnificent universe in which we live, what it's made of, how it's evolved over the past 13.8 billion years. And yet, when I look at an image from Hubble Space Telescope, like the one on the screen, I don't think first of the equations I've used to describe and study this galaxy, which is a spiral galaxy, very much like our own Milky Way galaxy. But I just sit back and think, isn't that gorgeous? It's a simply beautiful image. It pulls you in with those majestic spiral arms. And then I begin to think, it's amazing how science has allowed us first to capture this image and to realize it's just a snapshot in time. The stars and gas we see in there, the hundreds of billions of stars, are whirling about the center of that galaxy at enormous speeds. And most of what is actually in that galaxy, the matter, the stuff of which is made, is completely invisible to us. We can't see it with even our most powerful telescopes, and yet we can detect its presence. Those of us who are fortunate enough to work in science absolutely love what we do. Science is an amazing adventure. We get to explore, to discover, to use our imaginations, and to, to understand things that we're just beginning to uncover. And we want to share that with the rest of the world. The best science, of course, always starts with the question. So I have two for all of you here today. First of all, do you know what this is? And second, do you want to hold it? So your reaction is very similar to that we get from second graders. <laughs> Curiosity, a little interest, and a definite thinking of, is she really going to let us hold this, this particular cast? And the answer to the first question is, this is a mastodon tooth. It's about 14,000 years old, and it was found right here in Ohio. Mammoths and mastodons once roamed throughout this region, and we find their fossil remains. It's pretty cool. The reason I asked you the second question, do you want to hold it, is because I'm not going to let you hold this one, but there is a cast that I'm going to pass around. You're welcome to play with it and not listen to anything else I say during this talk, <laughs> because I want you to explore the science. And because we also hand it, over the past two years, we've put that cast in the hands of every single second grade student in the Cleveland public school system. We've let them handle it, hold it, and they hold it up to their, their own head or that of their friend next door, and we begin to give them the tools to ask and answer the question, what did this animal eat? How did it relate to its environment? And I bring all of this because these questions, this ability to hold real science, I think is the key to making a dramatic change in the way we approach science education. We all know science education isn't where it needs to be in this country. We're not doing what we need to, what we must, in order to engage and inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers, and also, equally or even more importantly, to engage, inspire, and educate the next generation of citizens of this country who are going to need to make critical decisions about advanced healthcare technologies for themselves or their families, or what we as a country should do in the search for renewable energy sources that are based in science. And we need to make sure that they're comfortable and, and willing to dive into the science enough to ask the questions and have those conversations. My frustration with science education stems from the fact that over 20 years ago, when I first got engaged in science education and outreach, we were trying to find a way to do a much better job. And today, we're having those same conversations and the same concerns. There's been a lot of progress in the sense that there have been creative new ideas. There are some outstanding programs and ideas out there. But by and large, we haven't made that huge leap in really engaging students in the science. And I think it's because we've left out of all our efforts something very, very important, the science itself getting it into the hands of the students, surrounding them with the images, the ideas of science today. We focus on teaching them the basics so they understand the fundamentals of, of science, but we forget to give them what inspires all of us to do so much more. So 
I want to give you an analogy to explain what I mean. How many of you listen to music within the last 24 hours? Pretty much everyone, maybe even on your way here, right? Music is totally integrated, woven into the very fabric of our culture. We use it to celebrate, to help us cope with loss, to bind ourselves together in groups, large or small, to have fun with. We sing to our babies, we dance with our friends. It enriches our lives in so many ways. Now I want you to imagine a world in which it's acknowledged that music is important, it needs to be part of our culture, but no music is ever heard. Instead, we start with children and we say, we're going to teach them music in school because it's so important. And we diligently set standards and test them. And by the end of elementary school, every child will know the notes of the scale and be able to play a single scale on the piano. And in order to graduate from high school, every student must pass a proficiency test on musical notation, be able to play the major scales and maybe a couple of minor scales. But there's no music around them. There's no iPod, there are no internet radio programs, the teacher doesn't put a CD on the classroom. They only hear what they can play themselves in this you know, very basic fundamental music education. Now think about what kind of world you would have. You are not going to have a culture that really celebrates and integrates music into their culture. And that, unfortunately, is what we do with science education today. We take children in and we work very hard to give them the basics, to teach them the techniques of science, but we don't give them the science itself. And we have to change it, and we have to change that now. It's not that hard to do. People sometimes say, how can you get kids away from their electronics, their phones, take them into a hall filled with dinosaurs, right? They immediately stop what they're doing and just go, whoa. But we also need to make sure we introduce them to dinosaur hunters and the fact that people are still finding new species of dinosaurs. There are more to be discovered, for them maybe to discover and we need to give them a piece of a dinosaur fossil to hold in their hand. That young girl is never going to forget that moment. And she now sent us a thank you letter saying she's on her way to becoming a paleontologist. We need to bring images into the classroom, into our newspapers. We don't need to wait until they understand exactly what kind of bug that is or how it fits into things. Show them the image. Let them get excited about the gorgeous colors or the strange mouth parts on these bugs, or the freaky eyes, <laughs> right? Let them be curious. Let us foster that, that innate sense of curiosity, wonder, the need to understand more that we're all born with. We need to build on that and, and let them take it a little bit further. If we want them to understand about living things and their relationship with the environment so they think a little bit differently about how we plan and build for the future, Introduce them to a golden eagle. Let them touch a snake. They get a different understanding of, of the world around them and how they might relate to it. Don't be afraid to take them out into the cosmos. Look for black holes or show them a gorgeous image like this of two galaxies that are about to collide with one another. The universe is a dynamic and exciting place, and we need to let them see this. This should be in a classroom on a wall or a computer, even if the teacher doesn't know how to explain everything that's in there. Get the questions going. And what I'm saying is not just fluff, it's just not extra stuff. It is the essence of how we need to inspire kids in science. And the question is, does it work? And I can tell you, Yes, it does. I have listened to a symphony on black holes that was composed by an eighth grade orchestra in Illinois working with the science eighth grade classroom. And together they learned enough about black holes so they could compose music that, that it was evocative of what it feels like to fall into a black hole and be stretched into a thin piece of spaghetti. I have seen the second graders that come into our program 
react with joy and excitement over the fact that they're getting to hold a mastodon tooth or pet an opossum. These kids are having an experience that their minds are open, they're going even deeper. And I want to leave you with one last story that explains what I'm trying to say. About two years ago, we had a special program for middle school girls, a day of hands-on real science. And we started them out in the planetarium in the morning. Nine o'clock on a Saturday morning, we bring about 85 girls in. And our tour guide for that morning was a young woman from Case Western Reserve, a physics major, who understood the planetarium and, and how to operate it. And she took those girls on an amazing tour of the cosmos. She started with the night sky above Cleveland, zoomed them out through the solar system past the planets, out to the most distant galaxies in the universe and beyond, and brought them all the way back again. Those girls were spellbound. The lights come up, and she says, I have time for some questions. Hands go up all over the planetarium. Great questions. They'd been paying attention. They'd been thinking. They were engaged. They had, you know, I was just floored by the questions. And then the tour guide said, I have time for one more question before you need to move on to your la next activity. One hand went up in the very back of the room. And a young girl said, can I just stay here? My heart stopped. Because the answer is, of course, yes, you can. You can stay here in this planetarium. You can stay in the cosmos. You can stay in science itself. We need to surround the children in every single classroom, within our culture at large, with the great symphonies of science. And when we do so, we open a portal into an entire new universe for them, one in which they're going to dive into the, into the science. They're going to have fun doing so. They're going to come away having learned something that's now their own. And most importantly, they're going to want to stay. They're going to want to learn more. Thank you.